Okay, so just by way of introduction and where we are for this first mock hearing is, somebody tell me, where are we supposed to be? Joe. We're, We're in the judges' chambers. Very informal. Um, Henderson, which is J Jamie and, and Flag Abiba. Um, you guys are bringing in Jerry, who's played by um, mm -hmm. Kate from the home where he was, <laughs> where he's been at. Yeah. Uh, his parents haven't, you know, haven't seen him yet. Um, notice it's Mrs. Galt and Jerry's older brother, whereas in the, the next hearing, we do have both parents there. So um, again, feel free, I mean, play up the roles. Like Joe, if you as Jerry's older brother, if you're pissed at Jerry for this, or if you're pissed at the <laughs> state, you know, same thing with whoever's playing mom, Geneva. You know what I mean? Feel free to really act the parts. You know, put yourself in the place of the players at that time. Um, and I will do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we'll do is Tanya's playing my clerk. So she, you know, she was sitting outside. You guys came to the judge's lobby. So she's bringing you guys in and announcing you. But then you'll introduce yourselves to me, and then we'll begin. Okay? We'll, we'll, oh, we have a clock in here again. Um, so we want to get through all three uh, today again because we have no class on Thursday. And by the way, I think I have everybody's email except um, meds. Did everyone get an email from me? Um, by the way, Umar is joining us. He was in an online class. He will be in the day class from now on. So this is enough for everybody. Uh, uh, so, so uh, Amanda, you're the only one that did not get the email with the ro assigned roles. I mean, we did them orally the other day, yeah. but I did you not? Okay, so Tanya needs to email me. So the other reason why I want to make sure that you do that is we're going to start on Tuesday with um, the red ribbon exercise, and I want to send you guys something regarding that. So for Tuesday, you want to read the First Amendment tinker and the, that group of cases, and then on Thursday, we'll continue with, you know, so we'll be right on target, basically, but rather than just go straight to tinker and the cases, we're going to start with um, a new class exercise that I'm going to email to you guys. It's also on, the, on CD. By the way, uh, Chris in the bookstore just told me that there are more CDs in there now, so whoever didn't have the CDs, they are there. Okay? Yeah, Mark? Am I missing something here? I don't know what you're talking about, the red ribbon. That, right, because it's not on the syllabus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's on the CD or not. I'm going to email you the actual exercise. Okay? It may or may not be on the CD. Even if it's on the CD, I have more info that I'm going to send you, okay? All right, so Tanya, you're bringing everybody in. Say, excuse me, judge, whatever you would say to me. I'm sitting, I'm eating my lunch, whatever I'm doing, I'm reading a paper. You don't have to introduce them. You can just say, um, the, you know, the case of Jerry Galt is coming in. And they can, they'll introduce themselves, okay? Good morning, the case of Jerry Galt is coming in. All right, come in everybody, you might need extra chairs. Um, Tanya, you want to bring in an extra chair for, uh, who, uh, who are you, you son? Oh, I'm, um, I'm Lewis, Lewis. Jerry's old brother. Oh, okay, you can come in too, you can come in too. All right, all right, so let me see. I already know Officer Flagg and Officer oh, oh. Henderson, I'm sorry, Officer Flagg and Officer Henderson. I, I, uh, Officer Flagg <laughs> and Officer Henderson, yeah, that's how well I know you. <laughs> but I need to know who everybody else is. Wait, off the record oh, for a second. You, you guys don't all have to come up oh. here. If you feel that you can... <laughs> Why is Leslie here? I'm a lawyer. No, you're not a lawyer. There's no lawyers before the golf case was decided. Oh, afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Who's the lawyer there? Okay. Jerry. Okay. You might as well all, all right, why don't you all okay. enter my chambers. It's easier than everybody can see. Okay, come on in. Oh, darling. Okay. Yeah, and Mrs., come on in. Yes, you can sit over here, Tony. So, okay. This way everybody can hear us better as well. 
Okay, hello everybody. Why don't we go around the room and introduce yourselves? You're okay. almost assuming I'm, this is. Um, yes, I'm Marjorie Galt. Okay. Hey, Jerry Galt. Jerry, I think I've seen you before. I don't think so. No? All right. <laughs> I'm Lewis, Jerry's older brother. Lewis, okay. And Officer? Captain Adam, Officer, Probation Officer Henderson. Yes. Officer Flagg. Okay, I remember you, of course. Um, uh, Officer Flagg? Yes. Were you the person that, that arrested Jerry? Yes. Okay, could you just tell me, fill me in on what's going on here? Okay, uh, what happened was, um, on June 18, um, uh, I arrested uh, Gerald. Mm -hmm. um, he um, he uh, called the neighbor Miss Crook. And he called who? The, the, his the, the neighbor, his neighbor Miss Crook. And, he uh, called his neighbor? Yes, and uh, he- No? He made- I Go he ahead. made a lewd remark, a bad remarks. My son doesn't make good remarks. Okay. Yes, so that's uh, that's what uh, the lady told me that she he called the oh, where friend she? Roland. Where is she? Oh, um, she's not here today. Well, I'd like her to be here. She's accusing my son of something that he didn't do. Mrs. Galt, really, there's no need for her to be here because this is very, you know, informal. Um, believe me, we have Jerry's interest at heart. I've been a judge in this court for a very long time. And we're really looking to, you know, help youngsters like Jerry. She, she really doesn't need to be here right now. She, okay. Okay. So uh, on June 8th, I went over um, at Gerald's house and um, arrested him and take him to the detention home. And uh, his parents was not at home at the time, but uh, because of what he did, and um, I picked him up in the detention home. Okay, all right. What's your role in this, um, Officer Henderson? Officer Henderson? Yeah. Um, I'm just accompanying Officer Flagg. Um, he gave me a recitation of what happened, the facts, and I was at the no. detention center with um, Officer Flagg and Jerry Galt. Okay. Is Jerry the only uh, person uh, arrested in this incident? No. Oh, there, so, go ahead. There was a, was a boy named Ronald mm -hmm. who was allegedly with Jerry Galt during this But we've only spoken with Jerry Gall to help with that. I'm sorry, Officer um, uh, uh, Flag. I don't know what's wrong with that. Flag. <laughs> Officer Flag. Where did you arrest Jerry? I'm in his house and arrest him. His house? Yes. No, you didn't come to our house. No, no Louis, I, I was Louis. at our house. You didn't arrest him at, at our house. So, well, how did you find out? I went, over, and I went over to his friend's house. And his friend Ron? Friend, his friend Ron, and, and they said they took him to Juvie. Okay, so Mrs. Galt, where were you when uh, this allegedly all happened? I was at work as well as my husband's fault. He was also at work, and when I came home, I had no idea why my son was missing. Okay, my they your son meaning Cherry. Oh, oh, yes. Jerry, yeah. even oh, Your Honor, I, uh, I apologize to Sherry for the rest of the show. Yes, yeah, so I sent my other son out to find out what had happened. He went to uh, his friend's house, and uh -huh. that's when he came back and told me he had been arrested or was taken to jail. No police officer came and told me. I had absolutely no idea where my son was. I'm very sure. How did you know to come here today yourself and uh, your, your son Louis? Uh, I received a note uh, on my door. It was handwritten. It was from one of the officers and it just said that we were going to have this informal. Oh good. So the officers, you did inform the family. Yes, we did. They, they came to the detention but that was only yeah. uh, when they found out that their son was in the home, they came to the detention home and um, I informed them that there would be a hearing the next day. Okay. Yeah. But we didn't know anything Louis? about what it was going to what this was going to be about. All we knew was that you had taken our board. Well, let me ask you this. You're the one that went to Ron's house. Yeah. You know, even though I, I haven't heard Ron's case yet, but yeah. so you must have learned some I, I'm assuming that you learned something at Ron's house regarding what was going on. We found out th that Ron had done something with a telephone calling one of the neighbors okay. and that they had taken the two boys away because of that. But they're blaming me for it. They're and I didn't do it. No. When you admitted that you did it. Well, I said I dialed the phone. I didn't do anything. It was all him. Should we be getting a lawyer? Did you read his rights? You know, no. no. <laughs> 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 I'm not calling you. Come on, judge, get control. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept saying, I want to call my mom and dad. I want to call my mom and dad. And they wouldn't even let me do that. <laughs> it is absurd. I didn't even. find out from a friend and his parents that my son was in the juvenile detention center and when I went all they told me is to come here I don't know if I should have a lawyer I don't know if I should be you 
you know, getting one for myself, one for my son. Well, you don't need a lawyer, Mrs. Galt. And Jerry, really, the state, ha you know, you're certainly entitled to when you uh, uh, receive notice of not only coming here to for Jerry's first appearance, but you'll also get notice of his trial. And he does have a right to trial. Um, but again, in terms of the, the, the juvenile court, we have probation, you know, we have the, the officers here, myself as the judge, um, and looking out for the best interest of, of Jerry. He doesn't really need um, to, to have a lawyer. Shouldn't he have at least gotten a phone call so you know where yeah. he was? Uh, but, but Your Honor, um, Your Honor also has a previous uh, record where uh, he, he accompanied a boy who stole a wallet that's on um, February 25, 1964. Um, I didn't do that either. So okay, this, that's this, why you look familiar. So probation does have exactly. information. Exactly. So this boy has doing, you know, prior, you know. So um, Jerry does have prior, and because he does, I'm probably gonna yeah, at least to hold him for a bit. So yeah, unfortunately, so are they, he's, uh, um, they are charging him with Mrs. Gall, and he will have a speedy trial. Let's see, today is. <laughs> Tuesday, January 24th. The court calendar is quite clogged. I'm thinking maybe by the, the end of February, uh, early March. Um, and you know, and if he's good in the in in, in the home, he, he he can apply for an early for an early release. But so I he's going to five months, seven months. Uh, no, no, that's only weeks. Oh, oh, son, okay. not months. Oh, okay. So it, it is general. No, February and March, you know, the calendar clears up in the next probably six weeks or so. So what exactly is he being charged with? What's he being charged with, officers? Uh, making lewd comments in the telephone call to his Which, by the way, is a crime in the, in the common law. So he is charged with something that is a crime. Um, on the one hand, very serious, but he is in juvenile court as well. Um, again, the juvenile court runs by the philosophy of the you do try to help youngsters like Jerry so they won't get in further trouble. Um, I, I, unfortunately, it looks like it's Jerry's second time being in trouble. But again, he does have the right uh, to trial. Blame for everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing further for today. Um, you know, again, the, I will hear this case formally, or another judge in this court will hear the case. So should I get a lawyer formally. for that? Here? You don't. You don't need a lawyer, Mrs. Scott. Really, you don't need one. Jerry in my, uh, me acting as McGee. Jerry couldn't go home, oh, right? Correct. What, so what, yeah. okay, so there might be a bail issue. Is the defendant gonna be allowed to, you know, leave and return to his home or is the defendant gonna be held? Um, 
what else occurs well, because it's a criminal. Normally, if it's a criminal, you would go to probation and determine whether they're indigent or not, and you have to appoint an attorney. Okay, so you have they to did it in real life. But. So right, yeah. So right, right to counsel. And so let's assume who is Jerry's counsel? Wesley. Okay. <laughs> no, stay there. <laughs> you know, get away from the judge's bench. <laughs> So let's assume now Leslie is the uh, um, duty attorney for the day. So Jerry is being, you know, brought in, and we're going to assume that Leslie has briefly talked with Jerry, so she knows something about the case. She's talked with his parents as, uh, as well, um, so that she can also be making, you know, the bail argument. And uh, obviously, he's he's not going to plead today. You're gonna you're gonna continue it for for the proceedings. At the next proceeding that we're gonna do is just the piece of the trial. But for the proceedings in the real case, um, it, it might be motion date, you know, motion to suppress or motion to dismiss. It might be motion to eliminate or you know different kinds of issues that come up. Um, discovery goes on in the interim and whatnot. But we're just advancing in our in our third scenario to the trial itself. So you're continuing the case pretty much. I'm going to hear from the, from the district attorney, yes, Mark, um, you're, um, because he's before the court for the first time, you're going to tell me the nature of the charges and see, and so you're going to make an argument that he should not be allowed to perform with his parents today, so in the nature of a bail argument. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I might hear from Stephanie and, um, and Elaine. Um, and I might not. And I mean, Karen is the probation officer, so I'm certainly going to hear from her in terms of the earlier wallet incident. So the, you know, his history with the court in terms of the bail, the bail issue. Now, um, Jerry walks in. No, I'm sorry, Jerry comes in because he's been held. But Mrs. Galt, Mr. Galt, and Jerry's older brother uh, are here. They're allowed to come in. They're, they're not party to the proceeding, but they're. Um, they they get notice, you know, along with the child, to appear. Um, they are very unlike an adult proceeding. You know, the, the parents um, are fully engaged in the delinquency proceedings. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Another choice that Jerry would be making here is that that uh, later on you're going to read um, a U.S. Supreme Court case, MacGyver versus Pennsylvania that held that juveniles do not have a right to jury trial. However, you know with Massachusetts, we sometimes afford more rights. So it, it, he has a statutory right to jury trial. So another thing that he's gonna do today, he's gonna do either do, uh, let's have him do the waiver, um, Leslie. Um, so what, the, <laughs> <laughs> he's not waiving anything, I know. No. <laughs> so he wants to waive his right to jury trial because he'd rather go before the judge relative to trial, but to do that, okay, you're gonna engage his parents as well. Um, so it's with the parents, you know, the parents are very engaged in, 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 in the process, and, and they should be, and the judges frequently will ask to, you know, if the juvenile kid comes in and, you know, there's no parent there, um, judges will say, you know, where's the family, what's going on? Again, part of the, 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 the parents' patriarchal philosophy still applies even with the due process rights. So those are the sorts of things that go on in the arraignment. The arraignment is fairly, fairly short, um, but those are the housekeeping things that the court takes care of. So um, Maria's gonna call the case, so quite different. Uh, the other thing is that they close proceedings, all right? So when, when um, who's, who's Jerry in this one? Amy. Amy. Oh, okay. So Amy and her, uh, well, even though she was brought in, they would be checking in with probation first um, in regards to not only the indigency issue, but you know, just checking in. And if Jerry's held, Jerry's held, but if, if even if, say, Jerry was coming in with his parents, they'd be waiting in the cor corridor somewhere. And typically, because they're um, private proceedings, and the name shouldn't even be called in the cor corridors, many of the courts actually assign numbers so when the um, court officer comes to the corridor and says, for example, you know, case number three, um, when the judge first gets on the bench, 
there are no parties there, only attorneys. And the clerk, you know, would have called the list of all the cases that morning. And so Jerry's case, Leslie would be there as well as Mark, you know, answering that they're ready. Or maybe if Jerry wasn't there yet, right, Leslie would say, I need a second call. Or, or if Jerry, again, the other thing that would happen is Leslie being the attorney, the duty attorney for the day, the court would say, um, you know, Attorney Arsenal, you need to go downstairs and, you know, you're appointed for purposes of bail only for today. So she might end up his attorney in the long run, but, but she's the attorney for the day. Um, so then she might need a second call and the case gets called again, uh, again without the parties, and the judge, they would say that they were, you know, they're ready to be called. So in any, any instance that everybody else is waiting outside, clerk calls the case, and only the parties connected with the case can come in. So one of the things that the judge might do is seeing all these people. All these people is only, you know, two parents and, and, uh, and uh, the brother. But sometimes in cases, especially with very ethnic cases, but I'm Greek, and I, uh, the whole, everybody would be covered. Grandmother, grandfather, cousins, <laughs> all talking a different language. And the judge would be like, oh, who is everybody? But frequently the, the judges do allow, you know, once they've been identified, okay, you can sit down, you know. Um, so what else do I need to say? Any questions so far? I'm sort of just sort of trying to describe also geographically. So Maria's going to call the case. You're all coming in, and then we'll go from there. I'll hear from from you first, Mark, and you know then from from Leslie. Um, now, if it was an adult case, frequently it's only the attorneys that do the speaking, and the judge relies on them. But again, these are the differences in the juvenile court. You'll frequently have the judge speak directly to parties, directly to mom, to dad, to whoever. Um, and it depends on the judge and the judge's sort of way of doing things as well. Um, so, all right, ready? The number? No, we're now in the courtroom. See, the, now that they've come in, we're in the closed courtroom, so you're gonna say Commonwealth Fiscal Case, you, you're gonna actually say the name, because we are in the closed proceeding all right. now. All right, so here comes the Gulf's case. That's all you have to say, Commonwealth be Jerry Gold, and you can sit down and then go back to your whatever it is that you were doing. And then I'm next. And then you would, well, you the two attorneys, you would identify yourself, so you'd okay. say. Mark you Warner, you? the uh, attorney for the state. Leslie Asinone, attorney for Jerry Gold. Now, who else do I have here? Your Honor, Karen Petrie. Yeah, she'd be actually sitting near in a different spot, off to my right or to my left, depending on the court. Um, and I already know her, so she wouldn't really be identifying herself. But for purposes of this, this fight, okay. Um, what else? Do the officers say who they are? Um, Even though we might be called as witnesses? It, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell me who you are. So, uh, Deputy Probation Officer Flack. Who else? Who are you? <laughs> no, you're not here. Mrs. Cook, wait, stop. Off the record. This is only in the arraignment, so the victim's not going to be here. All right? <laughs> Sorry, Med. <laughs> so this isn't after the Supreme Court case. This is before or waiting for this then? No, the no. The original arraignment. It's after the decision of the Supreme Court. It's after the arraignment. After the After decision, the that's why we're in the court with that. Jerry okay. having all these rights at the arraignment stage, okay? So we got it? Yeah. So what I would hear from first is Mark identifying himself, Leslie identifying herself, and really it would be the faults. The other people, you know, the officers are probably already here, probation is already here, but again, just for purposes of even the online people hearing the exercise, it's fine that the rest of you identify yourself. So um, who else? Officer Henderson, probation officer. Okay. Mrs. Marjorie Gall. Mrs. Gall. Mr. Gall. You didn't come to the arraignment. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you will be at the trial. Okay. <laughs> Jerry Gall. Sorry, Jerry. All right. Attorney Fournier, I'll hear you. Okay. The <coughs> state is a uh, charging uh, Jerry Gold with uh, against the statute that's provided.
signifies that a person who, in the presence or hearing of a woman or a child, uses vulgar, abusive, or obscene language is guilty of a misdemeanor. Uh, he, on the particular date, with a friend, made a phone call to a Mrs. Cook, an elderly woman, and used profane language and laughed, and it was an obscene call, and she has identified him. And what are the charges? Uh, using obscene, vulgar language against a woman or a child. This is against the statute of Arizona. I'm assuming this is going to be an issue of bail, but I'll hear you afterwards on that. Um, Attorney Arsenault? Your Honor, um, we put in a motion to dismiss all charges based on the fact that the Supreme well, Court... Well, uh, this court will set another date for, um, for motions today. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is your client going, I'm assuming your client is looking for a trial. Yes, Your Honor, my client is for looking trial. for a trial and he's looking to be So we'll set, we'll set motion dates first. Um, is your client um, electing jury trial? Yes, he is, Your Honor. No, he's not, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> That, that you've also been informed of, of, of the process and yourself and, and, and Jerry um, have signed a waiver of jury trial. You know what that means, Jer Jerry? do you know what that means? It just means that you get to make the call. It's like you get home and go home, right? <laughs> so you have, a right, you have a right to trial, Jerry, and your attorney um, for today, at least, is going to be arguing um, other issues for you. She may or may not be the attorney uh, for the trial, but you have a right to trial, and uh, you don't need to do anything at the trial. The district attorney has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt all the elements of whatever the criminal charges are. Your side can do nothing and, and, and still win if the Commonwealth does not prove. Um, and the reason why you're meeting the attorney today for the first time is because you have a right to counsel, and you have a right to counsel not only at trial, but at, uh, with regard to the issues that I'm going to hear today, one of the issues being whether you can go home with your mom or not. Um, do you have any questions? I just want to get this over with so I can go home. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney uh, <laughs> Arsenault, the district attorney has indicated that it may be an uh, issue of bail, and I know you conferred with your, your client on that. What do you have? to offer? Your Honor, um, I don't feel as though my client, Jerry, needs to be uh, bailed out. He has no risk of running away. We'll does Jerry go to him. school? Yes, he does, Your Honor. Uh, what grade is he in? He's in the second year of high school. Okay. How's he doing in school? He's doing pretty good. Does he go to school? He does. Well, uh, at least I've heard from the district attorney relative to the, the alleged facts of, of the incident. It appears he wasn't in school that day. No, he wasn't, Your Honor. He was... Um, and Mrs. Gault, you work, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, and so does Mr. Gault. You're here, I'm sorry. So you can chime in. And Mr. Gault, you work too? Yes, I do. Okay. So, um, Jerry, how old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen. So. You're both working when he uh, comes home from school, right? Is Jerry by himself? Yeah. No, he's not. No, I, I'm there. I'm Who are you? I'm his older brother. Oh, how old are you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 23. 18. What do you do, Lewis? I work in a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> So you are home when Jerry gets home from school? Yes. Okay. I work at night. You work at night. So you would know if Jerry is not going to school? It, in other words, you work at night, but then you must come home and go to sleep, right? Right. But he's so right. who makes sure that Jerry goes to school? Well, when I get home, he's leaving school then, and I go to sleep. Okay. Okay. And then you wake up. When By the time you wake up, is right. Jerry coming back from school? Yes. I'm sorry, go Your ahead, Tony. He admitted okay. that my client did skip school that day. He did uh, stay home from school when he wasn't supposed to, but that in and itself 
doesn't put him in a position to be locked away in a detention home for six years. He's been without his family, his mother and father, for um, almost two weeks now. He's in a detention home with other kids. It's been like less since last night. Okay, well, this is the third one. Or if it was a Friday, it would no, be he's, two days he's because been there it's way Monday. Too long, right? Way too long. He's in there with, with murderers, with rapists, with 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 children that are near adult age. Some of them are right up right before twenty one. He's in there with them when he could be home with his own mother and father, you know, who who have should have the care and protection of their child. Your Honor, according to previous cases. So you're saying, and I hear from the parents and the brother, that he would be uh, supervised, dur uh, supervised I'm sorry, during the interim? Absolutely. Uh, I guarantee uh, he'll be in school every day. Uh, let me hear from probation. Is there any record? Any, uh, uh, your what's Honor, your recommendation? Yes. Well, um, there was a referral made about two years ago, uh, an incident with the baseball bat being stolen from another boy, but Jerry was involved in that in some way. Um, and also, in February of this year, Your Honor, less than four months ago, Jerry was placed on probation uh, for a period of six months because he was in the company of another boy who had stolen a wallet. So he's still on probation? So he is Has he been complying? Um, outside of this, yes, Your Honor. He's been complying. And what would your recommendation be? Um, my recommendation, yeah, I would, um, well, I would recommend that he can be in the supervision of his parents. Thank you. Anything further, Attorney Thornia? Um, we happen to have some evidence. We have recorded the conversation, the, the comment she made, he made to Mrs. Cook. Could I play it back to the court? Uh, no, that's not before the court today, counsel. Okay. Uh, I would say that because he was on probation, he violated that, he should be held without bail until the trial. Because why, counsel? Because he could be possibly uh, a risk to, to run away. He's... Uh, been in, in uh, detention for a while. He's on probation. He's afraid of going back in. I would say it reasonable to ask uh, for either a no bail or a higher bail than parents are probably willing to pay just to keep him in to get and show that he's back in court. Thank you. Your Honor, th those previous charges they're speaking about have never been substantiated. There's no proof that Jerry ever committed those crimes or you know, that he's done anything wrong. But he's currently on probation. He's on probation, Your Honor, for something he didn't do. He, he was to say, never he's, given he's a proper trial. On probation, the issue of what he did or didn't do isn't before this court. But the, okay. the point is, Your Honor, he's not um, a risk of flight. Okay. He's not a bad kid. He's a good kid. He needs a chance to get back in school and get back into his routine that his parents, as his, his you know, true caregivers, um, deserve the right to raise their child and send them to school and teach them how to grow up and be, a, you know, a, a responsible citizen. He's not going to get Jerry, that in the detention home. I'm letting you go home today. It's called I'm releasing you on your personal recognizance. That means no bail at all. Um, and I'm being very generous in that respect. Um, I'm hoping that you do continue to go to school. I can't order anything regarding that. I mean, you still are complying with the probation in terms of your prior charges. So whatever the terms of the probation, and I heard from the officer that you are complying. So I'm assuming that um, part of that might have been some sort of school supervision. So what I'm assuming it, 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 it is, except for perhaps a couple of days, um, you have been going to school because if you hadn't, frankly, the school, you know, you would have been in here in another case where the school would have filed an action against you. Um, so get back to school. Um, hear from your brother that he's home. Um, your parents are obviously very committed and engaged in 
bringing you up. They're both here today. They both, and thank you so much for taking the time out of work. I know working parents, you know, you're, you're relying on your paycheck to bring your kids up. Um, I know that, um, you know, in the future, I really don't mind if just one of you come in and if you can decide between you, that would be fine. Uh, because other than, obviously, you're interested in how this case goes, but you're not parties before the court, you wouldn't be witnesses, you wouldn't be, you know, ordered to appear at the trial or any of the proceedings. So in terms of if you've got to get to work, then maybe you can take turns because there'll be other hearings before, you know, before the trial. Um, so if one of you come in, or even um, uh, Louis appears to be very responsible as well. <laughs> so if Louis uh, perhaps doesn't sleep for one day, he can come in as well. But somebody should be coming in, you know, with Jerry, an adult that's that, that's part of the family. So Jerry, I'm going to let you go home today. Um, uh, hopefully, I won't hear in any sh way, shape, or form from you or anyone connected with you until the next hearing date. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Next case. Why is our freedom next case? <laughs> all right. Any thoughts before we go on to the trial? Anybody have anything to say? My, my objective is released. What? Can you what? She can he object. She is unique as the victim. Now, notice two different outcomes as well in terms of that first hearing. You know, Jerry before in the real case, you know, why wasn't he allowed to go home? You know, ultimately he was, but it, it was kind of a silly prank. It, it is a criminal violation. So, by the way, when I asked what the charges were, I didn't interrupt you, but in Massachusetts it would be, you're not charged directly because it's, it's the juvenile court and it's per se not like an adult criminal case. So you're charged actually with delinquency by reason of having committed a crime of the common law. We get into these later on in the semester when we get into the delinquencies. Um, what else? So all minors charges are lumped under delinquency? Well, no. Youthful offenders are the most serious, but I'm not going to get into that today. Yeah. Um, but if it's a crime, it's going to be delinquency or youthful offender. But anyway, what I was saying is, you know, I released, there was no, really no reason for me to even impose bail. Both parents are here. He has been going to school. The charge is not that serious. He's on, probation is telling me he's complying. So, you know. I basically said, take him go home. Now, suppose parents weren't there, that might, that might have been an issue. Or suppose he was on probation and actually had violated the terms of his probation. The probation would be looking to violate him, not only for having violated those terms, but for the new charge. Now, she could have been a real stickler and said, this was a violation, this new charge. And she wasn't. She you know, gave him a little bit of leeway and said, you know what? You're better off going home with your family. Joe, you had your hand up? There's nothing in the Supreme Court decision that changes the way bail would be treated. Or some of these, I mean, you, the change that the judge has. For example, um, what I didn't say, um, and it, it didn't get to be an issue, in Massachusetts, the adult bail statute applies to delinquency cases, 276. In fact, even the adult dangerousness hearings also apply to delinquency cases. Um, if Jerry was aggrieved by my um, bail decision, say I decided against what Leslie was arguing, he actually has the right to appeal to Superior Court. And so a lot of juvenile defense attorneys go to Superior Court, it seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Superior Court, you know, to argue that, you know, a, a decision made by a juvenile court judge relative to, to bail. The adult rule, you know the rules of criminal procedure? Adult rules. They apply to delinquency proceedings. Um, by the way, what are the rights? I'm sorry, go, go ahead, ask your why, What's the Superior Court rather than District Court? From well, court? if you look at the bail statute, well, that that's the thing. A lot, I don't know, the Superior Court has jurisdiction. It's called the bail reviews. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> what are the rights? that um, the Supreme Court case of Ray Galt, um, what, what particular rights have been 
for what it is for. for. And we've seen the lack of them in the first hearing and some of them in the second hearing and then all of them <laughs> in the third hearing that we're going to do. What are the rights? Right Amy? Oh, okay, go ahead. Right to counsel is one. Karen? I mean, put notices. Notice, okay. And the notice, by the way, because we're talking about Massachusetts and the juvenile proceedings, the notice attaches to not only the kid, but obviously the family as well. So notice, write the counsel. Opportunity for cross-examination and confrontation. And confrontation. Confrontation, confrontation and cross-examination. All right. So and what else? Self-incrimination. Self-incrimination. Okay. So notice that really, I mean, what did I, I mean, I really didn't ask Jerry anything about the, the incident itself. Whereas at the first hearing, Kate was voluntarily, <laughs> uh, didn't do it, and you know, going right to the, you know, issue um, of the elements of the charge. Uh, so, you know, you have the right to an attorney, you have the right to notice, but, um, you know, in terms of there's no reason for it. And remember, I said to you also, the Commonwealth gets the right to put, you don't even have to testify, and it's not held against you. By the way, later on, when we do the care and protection cases, ne neglect of abuse, if parents don't testify, there's actually an inference of unfitness. So it works, so again, very different in the civil care and protection cases. Okay, so here we are now at the final hearing, and assuming that, I mean, it's a real trial, so there would have been opening statements, and different witnesses, but now we have the star witness on the stand. <laughs> can everybody see him then? Because I, I'm gonna move over a little bit. And who's my clerk? Maria, would you help me? Well, you know what, oh, Ahmed, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, Uma, our brand new student doesn't have a role, so you're my there clerk. You Get up here. <laughs> so Amy is still, Jerry, uh, Sandra and Ed are the goals, you're here, Karen, you're here as the, the, the brother, the officers are here. Notice that I didn't even talk to Flag and Handers Henderson, there was really no need to. Um, now, at the trial, and when I'm doing that piece of it, you guys might have, pushed, you were directly involved with Jerry, so you might have been witnesses in the trial, but we're not gonna get to that. Leslie still is the attorney for Jerry, Mark is the district attorney, Karen's probation. Um, uh, Ed is Mrs. Mrs. Cook. So again, um, Uman will now call the case, You'll introduce yourselves. I'll ask who's in the courtroom, and everybody else will identify themselves. Um, any questions? All right, go ahead. Uh, the case before the court is in Ray Galt. Attorneys? <laughs> my name is Mark Thorne for the state. Actually, I already know you. <laughs> oh, you said pretty funny about the Commonwealth. Your Honor, I'm Leslie Asnold, attorney for Jerry Galt. Thank you. Who else is here today? I see you. Mr. Ross Cook. Mrs. Cook. So you have to <laughs> Well, you would be actually saying that the witness that you have here is Mrs. Cook. Mrs. Cook. Yeah. Okay. And actually, you're going to swear her in in a minute. Um, I, Mr. and Mrs. Bell, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, um, Louis, um, and the officers and whatnot. Now, um, anyone that's going to be testifying, I'd like to get to stand and raise your right hand. And my clerk was waiting in. I don't know what's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Just promise to tell the truth. Yeah, promise to tell the truth? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard opening statements the other day, trying to call you a colleague for witness. All right, Mrs. Cook. Uh, how often have, or how, how well do you know the defendant, Jerry? Can we just stop for a minute? Because I neglected to talk a little bit about direct and cross. And everyone can kind of help with the um, objections. So 
the attorney doing direct is doing what? Eliciting from a witness who um, is knowledgeable of the facts, right? The what, when, where, how, why of the facts. And it's the witness that should be telling the story. The attorney should not be testifying. The attorney also has to lay some sort of groundwork. So, um, you know, you want her to identify herself and say where she lives and that sort of stuff first. Um, <coughs> along with Leslie, who's the attorney for Jerry, if, any, if anybody notices that the that, that de defense should be making an objection, just feel free to say, just say objection and we'll, we'll, you know, decide whether, uh, what to do with that objection, all right? <laughs> Same thing with, now, when Leslie does her cross-examination, again, she's going to be asking questions that really call for a yes or no answer. She's going to be asking questions that she should know <laughs> the answer to. She's basically doing the testifying, getting the witness to admit or deny certain things and so forth. And again, um, if it's not relevant, if there are other reasons, if it's hearsay, you know, other reasons for objections, the state can, can be objecting. So feel free to make the objections. Here we are at the trial with the full panoply of due process rights that Jerry has. So it's run just like, you know, an adult trial in, term, in terms of process. Okay, all right. Uh, could you tell the court your name, please? Uh, this is cool. How, and where do you live? Uh, I live uh, four houses away from uh, <laughs> Objection! <laughs> Sustained. <laughs> uh, oh, and by the way, there are judges that do that. <laughs> so I can do that. <laughs> okay. uh, how, how long have you known uh, Jerry Brown, or Jerry Gold? <laughs> uh, forever, ever since he was a kid. Okay. Uh, has he ever called you? Yes. I know he never called me. He called you. Has he ever entered your home for any reason? I'm sorry, Mrs. Cook, I can't hear you. They, uh, Who's they? The, the defendant and his friend. The defendant and his friend. Can we just back up for a moment? I, I heard the, um, that you lived, um, what's your address? Uh, 500 Feather Street. In <laughs> and, and you live in a, a, a freestanding home, or is it a tenement with other uh, people? Or? No, I live with my mom. My husband died last year. Then you, and you own the house? Yeah. You live alone? Yeah. How old are you? Objection. Objection. <laughs> Why? 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 You, live? you never ask a woman her age. <laughs> <laughs> Clean your own home? 
or do you have a housekeeper? Objection, leading okay. questions. Are you, how, how do you clean your home? How do you maintain your interior home? Um, I do it myself. Okay. Are, how do you maintain the exterior? Uh, sometimes kids from the block, they come and help me. Kids from the what? And Mrs. Cook, are we yeah. From the block. From the block, okay. Uh, do you ever, uh, are they ever invited to help you on the property? No, they just They, they just show up and volunteer. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, have you then ever spoken to Jerry on the phone, other than the time you let you call him? Okay, wait, I heard an objection. What's uh, leading again? You gotta get away from your yes and no's. Okay. <laughs> so you gotta rephrase, you gotta you withdraw the question. Okay. Uh, How has Jerry right. ever contacted you? How could yeah? Could you tell us about how the most recent contact he had with you? Um, it was a week ago when he came in and cleaned my yard. Okay. Uh, could you tell us about any phone calls you've had recently? Yeah, the one from from Gerald and his friend. This is quick. I have a question. So, how, in your estimation, how many times has Jerry, uh, either himself or along with his friends, clean, actually cleaned your yard? How many times? In say, in the last year? Nine. Nine times in the last year. And and in those nine times, uh, you talked with Jerry. Yes. Okay. 
did some of them work together? In other words, were there two or three one time, two or three another time, all five? Usually, uh, Jerry and, and uh, Ronald, they come together and the rest they're just separate. Okay, so Jerry and Ronald and then three mm -hmm. others. Why do all these boys like to do work for you? <laughs> 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 How would he know why the boys would want to do something? Because he had volunteered earlier, they think we're working for free. Then rephrase it. Why? I, actually, I'm, 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 I'm going to overrule the objection. I'd like to get the answer. Go ahead, repeat the question. Um, oh, why do the boys work for you? Oh, oh work. Because they like <laughs> What do you what do you say or do that makes them like you? Do you give them cookies or do you pay them? Objection. Uh, why don't and too many questions at once? Okay. Right. Compound questions. So do why don't you ask that them? last one? Do you pay them? Yeah. Go ahead. No. Do you give them cookies? No. Well, that's a leading question. Do you pay them? Is there any other uh, way? Uh, you know. How else would you reward them or compensate them? So there, do you know of any reason why they would make a prank call if they like you with that? Well, I'm going to object to that. And what's the reason for that, objecting to that question? <laughs> well, it's not only it's speculative, but all of a sudden he went to the prank call. I haven't heard. Okay, yes, facts not in evidence. Okay. So back up, counsel. Okay. Um, you can bring her to the date, you know, on such and such a date, and then so she can get into the telephone okay. conversation. Mrs. Cook, what were you doing when the phone rang on that date? Watching TV. Was the TV on while you were talking on the phone, or did you? Just... No, I usually mute the TV and answer the Okay, so you could hear the phone clearly. Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have to ask? them to repeat what they said because it was hard to understand? No. Your hearing is very good then. You have no trouble with... Your hearing is very good. You have to ask him. Sustain. Uh, have you ever been prescribed a hearing aid? No. Okay. Um, did, what did you do after you got the call from the boys? Actually, could you describe the call? <laughs> they were they were laughing, making fun of me, calling me a whore. <laughs> Did you record the call or have your answering machine going? What's that? <laughs> Which one of you hung up first, the boy or you? They did. They did. Then what did you do? I called the police. What did they advise you to do? Nothing. Did they ever come to your house? Uh, no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, did any detectives talk to you? Or who would we should to talk to? Actually, you? Mark, uh, the rest of this, let, let's move on. Okay. Cross examination. I'm looking at the time. Go ahead, Leslie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Mrs. Cook. Um, the attorney for Jerry Gold. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Um, prior to uh, the morning of June eighth, you um, have Jerry Gold ever called you on the telephone that you know of? No. Um, you mentioned in your testimony that you know Jerry Gall because he's helped you around the house. Is that correct? Yes. And you don't pay Jerry Gall. Is that correct? No. So basically, would you say that Jerry Gall has been kind to you? Not after that phone call. <laughs> We're talking before that phone call. Before the phone call. Was he uh, uh, kind to you and a, what you would consider a good boy? Yes. Okay. Um, so Jerry Galt uh, and his friend Ronald as well have done a lot of work for you as you testified. However, there are at least three other boys in the neighborhood as well that have done work for you. Is that right, Mrs. Galt? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Galt, 
the, uh, I mean, Mrs. Cook, <laughs> the, the prosecutor has asked you about your hearing, and you stated you do not do not wear hearing aids. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, could I ask you, when was the last time your hearing was tested? Last year. And what were the results? Do you remember? Yes, uh, I don't need hearing aids. You don't need hearing aids. Okay. And Mrs. Cook, um, how can you be sure that it was actually Jerry Gold that called I know what I heard. that morning? I know what I heard. What's but the answer? I know what I heard. But you Wait, have off the right bit. I some of the students saw me shaking my head and saying, Don't do that, Leslie. Why did I say that? She's just upset. The question was repeat your question? Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, repeat your question. Prior right to that day had did you know, how did you know that it was Jerry Cook's voice? Yeah. Well, why does she not want to ask something like that? Because you're giving the witness enough room to answer. You're, you're giving the witness enough room, exactly, enough room to answer. I absolutely knew it. Again, you want to get her to admit or deny certain things. Okay. That sometimes you can become overzealous and just do too much. You were doing well until that question. Um, okay. Notice that the, the fact at the end, she added they, they didn't think they did, she didn't think they did that great job the last time they came. Is there anything you could do with that fact? Think about that and ask a question. If you know what um, I'm talking about. Mrs. Cook, um, the last time that Jerry and, and Ronnie came to your house to clean your yard, um, what did they do for you? No, no, no. What? No. No. Okay. Did they do your job? Stop, they want, stop, stop. The what? It's the type of question yes, that no, the right? attorney doing direct examination would be doing. What, when, where, how, okay. then the witness would be describing. Okay. The attorney doing cross-examination okay. wants to ask the question. It's really not even a question. You You're making a statement, you right. and you then the witness. Right. Okay. You weren't happy with your job last Did time. Did you hear what right. Joe said? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, go ahead. Is it true, Mrs. Cook, that uh, the last time Jerry and Ronald did some work for you in your your yard, you stated that you were not happy with it? Yes. Um, I can't ask. Could you tell us what happened? No, no. 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 You told me to say that. You established the point. She doesn't like Jerry very much. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> were you ever happy with Jerry's work in your yard? No. 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 Wait, go back, go back, back to the past. Right. Isn't it true that uh, after your day surgery, Jerry voluntarily came to your house, he fed your right. dad, he gave you tea. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Known as a hoe. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Did you watch Jerry do the work in your yard, Mrs. Cook? Can you be absolutely sure that he did not use the hole? <laughs> Mrs. Cook, there is indeed a, a, a real yard tool called a hole that I need is used. Expert testimony. <laughs> Questions, uh, Attorney Arsenal. I uh, actually, we have about okay. ten minutes. Now. We can do closing arguments if you're okay. finished with the witness. <laughs> so, uh, Attorney Cornyn, do you want to uh, be heard for a couple, uh, just maybe two or three minutes? Okay. Close it. See if you can convince the uh, court that you've made your case. Okay. Uh, I feel we've came, the state has uh, made a fair case to show that Jerry, in fact, did call her and uh, left some so left some so obscenities. Uh, the comments that she supposedly he supposedly said to her called her a hoe and mentioned a tool in the yard, but I think they were separate. Perhaps they weren't referring just to the tool. It said she's a hoe, which is like she's not she's a shovel, she's a broom said she's a hoe, and that's different from the hoe of the yard. So it's obvious uh, from the state's perspective that he did, in fact, violate the statute by calling her a vulgar name. Uh, we also, uh, it was retrieved from the line, and I have recording of the, of the comments, uh, but we won't play it. <laughs> um, I believe the, my sister has failed to disprove that he in fact did make the call. He was home. Uh, his friend uh, actually admitted to making the call with him. So as a co-conspirator, they were both guilty in making this call. And there was the admission of the other friend. And no, she, she can't get behind that at all. Thank you, counsel. Attorney Asenal. Your Honor. Um, <coughs> Jerry Galt was accused of making a lewd phone call to his neighbor, Mrs. Cook. When uh, the accusation was made of that phone call, there, it's been acknowledged that there was two boys there, approximately the same age. Um, it, although they were both there and both involved, Jerry Galt has stated on many occasions that he did not say those words. and. The crime he's charged with today is uh, lewd behavior in the fact that he said the word and called Mrs. Cook, uh, an innocent victim, a hoe. Your Honor, it's never been actually proved that Jerry was the one that said the, the word to her. Therefore, it hasn't been proved beyond uh, a reasonable doubt that um, Jerry, in fact, broke the law. Jerry has been um, detained in, in a detention home away from his parents, his brother, his friends, and his school. For how long? That's not before the court today, counsel. Two weeks. This is the trial. If he were guilty of this charge, which we claim he is not guilty, He's already done that the time he so. has <laughs> the fact of being put in that home for two weeks, uh, Your Honor, has already had the, the advantage of teaching Jerry a lesson. Jerry is, all he does is, all he wants is to be home with his family, go to school, and if Mrs. Cook um, will allow him again, he'd like to make up for this and help him, help her with some more yard work, and if she doesn't, he'll never ever call her, look at her, or go near her again, Your Honor. But, to put a 15-year-old boy in a detention home, and you know he, he was given at the the trial he was given six years in that home. Well, I haven't uh, heard, I haven't if, made a decision yet, counsel. So you, you can certainly make an arg uh, argument later about disposition. The opposing um, argument should be confined to whether the state has proved the case beyond a reasonable doubt. I, I do not um, believe, Your Honor, that that the case ha that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt 
that Jerry not only, he did not prove, they did not prove that he did this act of the phone call, that the previous charges have never been proved. There was no witnesses, there was no lawyer, there was no, uh, all his uh, Fourth Amendment, Fourteenth oh, so Amendment. Find right? yourself to the evidence that this court just heard. If you if you finish, he, to them. He, the evidence that that the state has presented um, is is hearsay, is uh, superficial, and is not concrete. There is no proof that my client did this. You can sit down. All right. What what should I do quickly in the couple of minutes that we have. Thank First you. of all, <laughs> show, <laughs> show of hands, show of hands, has the Commonwealth proved uh, this crime beyond a reasonable doubt? Show of hands. <laughs> Just tell me, so the rest of you, no. tell me why, tell me why not. So, so we have the witness um, on the stand, an elderly lady, but still gets around. She drives around. She identified Jerry, said she saw Jerry nine times. Obviously has talked with Jerry, and then she says that she could identify his voice on the phone. So why do you have a problem with that? Uh, I guess I had a problem when, on cross-examination, they brought they impeached her credibility as saying that she wasn't happy with Jerry. Okay, okay. What else? Anybody else have another thought? Why do why the Commonwealth is not the case? Actually, there is no evidence that he actually spoke because it's over the phone. How could she know that it's 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 Gerard's uh, voice, not the other boy's voice? And considering she's a 73 year old, 78, 78, oh, oh wow, that's but we can't worse. discriminate there. 78 years old women. So she wasn't credible, but she admitted she, she couldn't remember. So that she couldn't remember what? Yeah, she couldn't okay. remember something that happened a few days before the phone call. So how could she right. remember? They could have similar yeah. voices. I mean. Yeah, what well, else? If I could have uh, come up with phone records proving that the phone calls came from Jerry's house to her house, though, that would have been different. Oh, there would be other yeah. evidence. Yes. Yeah, yeah right. certainly oh, yeah. the trial itself. There's mm -hmm. lots of things. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised. I thought there'd be more people on the, on the conference side. But notice how I was sort of trying to refocus Leslie in her closing argument, because the closing argument only has to do with the trial that I just heard. So that's the adjudication phase. And remember in the In Ray Gold case, the Supreme Court says these rights, right to counsel, notice, cross-examination, and confrontation, and right to um, play on self-incrimination, um, those rights according to like just the, the, um, the narrow holding of Gold only attached at the adjudication phase of a delinquency proceeding. Right? However, however, all the states pretty much have then afforded those rights at other stages as, as well, at disposition, um, when we do the transfer hearings. Um, some of those rights also go into the camp protection and Chin's cases and whatnot. Um, and I hope you saw the differences between <laughs> the early Gulf case and the later Gulf, Gulf case. Like and just, and, and and just because Jerry has all these due process <laughs> rights, it doesn't mean that the judge, the judge might have believed the witness, you know? Um, and frankly, I'm still not sure. I might have to take this under advisement and then get this <laughs> later on. Um, because I like the witness. She's 78, she's spry, she walks, um, but she did have to, there was a little bit of a vendetta against Jerry, and I don't know if that would be enough to, to cause reasonable doubt or not. So again, no class Thursday. Um, I'm gonna email you the, the, we're doing the red ribbon exercise. Just remember, you'll be getting that um, through the email for Tuesday.